tonight to the con men trying to cash in on the financial troubles which have brought some of Yorkshire's biggest banks to their knees. Yes, the Halifax Bank of Scotland and Bradford and Bingley takeovers have left customers worried for their savings. But internet scammers saw the crisis as an opportunity. The number of bogus emails trying to get your bank details has increased by a staggering 246%. Well, in a minute, we'll be asking one of Britain's top internet security experts what you should do to stay safe. But first, our consumer correspondent, Tina Gelder, looks at the scam, which is known as phishing. Now, if you're at your computer and you get an email, apparently from your bank or building society, with a title like important message from the Halifax or account review from the Bradford and Bingley, then the last thing you should do is this. Because once you click on the link for more information, you've just entered a phony website and the fraudsters have drawn you into their fake world. They ask you to verify or update personal details such as account numbers, PIN numbers and passwords. And whilst the current financial crisis is bad news for most of us, it seems the con men are cashing in, putting millions of customers at risk. So how can you protect yourself? Well, only open email attachments if you're expecting them and know what they contain. If someone contacts you, then verify that person's identity. Call the company they say they're from. And look out for spelling mistakes and bad grammar. However, you'd be wrong to underestimate the sophistication of these scams. But remember, a financial organisation will never ask you for sensitive information. The fraudsters are fishing. Try and ensure you don't take the bait and get caught. Tina Gelder there. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to Dan Field. His company, clearmymail.com, specialises in combating the hackers. And I began by asking him, why have we seen such a huge increase in these scam emails? Well, what the, the criminal gangs behind these emails do, they watch the news headlines to try and find ways to entice people to open their emails. So because the banks are in the news so much at the moment with problems, with banks failing, they know people are more likely to open and believe an email from which pretends to be from their bank. How do you tell the difference between a real email and a fake email? Um, some of them you can tell quite easily. You need to look for spelling mistakes in the email. The logo might not be quite right. And they'll be asking you things like, they'll be asking for your account details or your PIN numbers. A real bank email will never ask you for those details. So what advice would you give to anybody who gets one of these and they inadvertently or they've been pulled in by this and have clicked on it and now might find themselves in, in some danger, as it were? Uh, the first thing really is never to click any links from an email which pretends to be from your bank. Your bank will never send you an email asking you to click a link. If you do click one of those links, make sure you don't give away any of your PIN numbers. Your bank will never ask for your PIN number. If you do get tricked into giving away your details, then you should contact your bank straight away. Is there a way of finding the perpetrators of this crime? It's very difficult because it comes from all over the world. We've seen emails which originate from Canada, for example, sent to people in the UK. But then the websites we hosted somewhere in Eastern Europe or even over in the US. So it's quite difficult to track down the people. So basically, it could still continue, it could continue to increase, particularly with the financial situation at the moment. Yeah, I think it will continue to increase. The people behind the emails are getting more clever, they're getting a lot smarter with the way they design their emails, so they do look a lot like legitimate messages. Okay, Danfield, thanks very much for joining us tonight. Okay, thank you.